Today we continue Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, verse 7. When will Sri Radha's moon like face that is like the matchless quintessence? of the ocean of nectar and whose ever astonishing playful elegance causes Mohan enchanting Krishna to stand in his sweet threefold bending form become manifest to us <clears throat> when will Sri Radha's moon like face that is like the matchless quintessence of ocean? of nectar and whose ever astonishing playful elegance causes Mohan to stand in his sweet threefold bending form become manifest to us. Sri Radha's face is the quintessence of the ocean of rasa. Commentary In the previous verse, Sripad saw his Ishvari as the Nikunja Devi. Devi means the worshipped. It is even more astonishing when Rasikendra Mauli, Krishna, the king of relishers, worships Radhika in the Kunja as when the Sakis and Manjaris do it. She is called Devi because even Rasika Sekara serves her. When Radha and Mohan enter the Kunja, Mohan lovingly wants to serve Priyaji in different ways. So the maidservants bring him a pitcher of water. With the water from that pitcher, Mohan washes. Priyaji's lotus feet and dries them off with his yellow dhoti. The maidservants understand Sham's mind and they bring flowers. Mohan offers a handful of flowers at Swamini's lotus feet. Chants 
Jaya Prema Mai. And then offers his obeisances. While tears of love flow from his eyes. Touching Radhika's feet and bowing down to them is like a festival of rasa for Mohan. How beautiful Srimati's face is when she looks at Mohan's face at that time. How many amorous pastimes her beautiful face reveals. How enchanting are the movements of her eyes and her eyebrows. Before, Jai, Jai Shiradi, before we go to Rupa Goswami then, uh, there, there's so much going on here that makes my heart beat. I wanted <laughs> to share. Uh, maybe two things. One, just what, what we just read there about the reaction that happens when Radha and Mohan look at each other directly face to face. It's really not so often in the Leelas that this happens or that we hear about it. It happens every moment, but that we hear about it, it's not so often. This is the image of Krishna, God who wants to relish the experience of divine loving, who now, in this moment, when they're face to face, it happens. And it's a scene where there's fireworks. It's pure love meeting pure loving. And so it's described as what did you say, my dear? A festival of rasa. Mm. The highest form, and then a party on top of the highest form. A festival of the highest emotion possible. And then what happens? What does Mohan see in Radha's face? He sees the history of all the times they've met before, how many amorous pastimes her beautiful face reveals. So concentrated in her beautiful face is all the history of the love story of Radha and Mohan. Thousands and millions of times they've met like this, and yet it's greater than ever, and they're all present in her. And he experiences this when he sees her. So it's not just that he's beautiful. It's not that yet just that she's beautiful. It's that he sees the infinite, the history of beauty of the universe in her face. And the second thing that really moves me so much in this in the verse and then also in the commentary is <clears throat> the word astonishing. It happens in both. It's in the verse there. That Mohan is always astonished. Or no, sorry, Mar no, not Mohan, but we are always astonished. We, or Prabhupada, Prabhupada Nan, is always astonished. And then it's mentioned in the purport, too, that there's something astonishing. Well, we're astonished because it's something we haven't seen before. 
And it's a way of saying that the experience of this beauty, without this beauty, the experience of the beauty which is inspired by the love and by Mohan looking at her, is something we've never seen before. Because that love is always new. That love is always growing. It's always greater and greater. And and in Sarakavesh, which is what Prabhupada is in right here, he's in material form. He's surprised by it. Because the love surprise is mental, it's material, it's his mind. And the love that he's witnessing explodes his mind. <laughs> it's greater than his mind can grasp. And every time he meets her, it's greater than his mind can grasp. So it's only by going into Siddhadeya, the spiritual body, that he can actually absorb this and be part of this. And being in Siddhadeya means being in his sort of being in, in his spiritual self. So we are, we as sadhikas are always surprised. We're always astonished because this love goes far beyond what we experience in our material lives, even in our partial spiritual experiences of our material lives. This love is greater than, than any, greater than my love for my grandmother or for my kids or for my lovely wife. It goes beyond all of them. So that's the second thing I wanted to share. Brother. Good morning, Radhe Radhe. Sorry, I come with delay a little. Um, now, uh, Nihon no mina san tsuyaka hajimemashita now. Japanese translation started. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you for coming so many Japanese devotees. Yeah. So, Fudamaji explained very nicely. <coughs> I feel like uh, this bus, Krishna become like made servant of Radhika. And uh, Krishna wash Priyaji's lotus feet and dry them off with his yellow dhoti. That's actually, this is Manjari's work. Mm. But the Krishna was so excited, so excited to, to serve Shurimati Priyaji. And uh, also bring flower. Krishna offer handful flower and Swami's lotus feet. Jaya Prema Mai. Jaya Prema Mai. Prema Mai means always in Prema, full of Prema. Radhika. So this is a very beautiful scene because Krishna become Krishna change radicals. Gurudev used to say, uh, Krishna is usually sub uh, object, and uh, radical is subject. And uh, but uh, this is uh, what's Vishaya. Actually, object is Vishaya. Subject is uh, uh, Ashuraya. So this changing. Radhika become object, Krishna become subject, servant. This is also interesting. And uh, they look each other's face. Uddhavaji describes all universe history in, in, in Radhika's face. I feel all history of his, her pastime or what she do, before meeting, she much, so much, you know, suffering, so much hankering, 
you know, many, many feeling inside in Radhika's face. Not only that, Radhika's face is every time that his, her beauty is increasing. Because if Radhika see Mohan's face, then Radhika feels so enlivened, so, what do you say, enlightened, become more blissful. And Shama become more also, Shama see Radhika's face more, more enlightening, more blissful. So this is increasing Raga and Anuraga is increasing. This also describes uh, Radhika's uh, glory. Mm. Uh, actually, Radhika's glory, this is Mohan also, Mohan's glory also. Because serving Radhika does not, uh, does not uh, decrease Mohan's glory. Actually, Mohan's glory more increases. So this is very interesting, you know. In material world, if someone who serves the great personality, maybe, maybe feel, oh, he, he's lower, or she's lower. But in especially spiritual world, servant become more glorious sometimes. Because more pleasure is coming. This is the beauty of this Radha Mohan's pastime. Radha Radha. Jainanda, so, could I ask you um, a question? In the verse, uh, in the verse it says that Radha's beauty makes uh, Mohan stand in his uh, threefold bending form. Can, do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Hmm? The three, the three, threefold bending form. This is this is so. This is this is Tribanga Rarita form. You know, like Krishna's always taking fruit. You know, having fruit, and this. Uh, what do you say? This. Uh, this. What do you say? This. This. Face also a little bit bending. And I also, yeah, and then waist also bending. And like on the altar, we can see on every altar when we see yeah, yeah. Krishna, there's all, always in this tree falling form. And then, and then leg also, you know, little bit very, like, uh, what do you say, very funny, you know? And then, why this Tribanga Rarita form? Some, you know, some person may ask. I don't know really, but many, many reasons. Sometimes Radhika, you know, he come to near and, uh, you know, his, his, his legs. Sometimes, you know, he has some very funny guy. Krishna is very funny guy. You know, sometimes he like, uh, you know, studies a little bit for his up or, you know, some kind of, mm. you know, very funny, funny thing Krishna does. And this tri, Tribanga Rarita form represent Krishna is not straight. Krishna's nature is crooked. Right. And, you know, many, so this Trimanga Rarita home is very beautiful. And all gopi, maybe not only gopi, all inhabitant of Braja attracted this Trimanga Rarita home. So here mentioned, uh, so this, this, generally speaking, Generally speaking, Krishna, Krishna attract all other devotee, all other living entity in this form. But in this case, Radhika's beauty attract Tribanga Rarita homes, Moha. So then Radhika become Krishna attract, eh, what do you say? Madana. God, eh, God, like love God. But uh, Radhika attract, so therefore Krishna called Madana Mohan. But uh, Radhika attract Krishna, therefore his name is uh, 
m a d a n a Mohana Mohini. So this is also represented. Why this represents this Tribangarita home? It represents Krishna t r a c t all universe, all living entity. But Radhika a t r a c t even this Krishna. So this describes Radhika's more, what is it? Glory. <laughs> That's my feeling. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. So recently,、uh, we read the Mahatma Ji also with Guru Dev to read what is underlined is important. So I would like to share what Guru Dev says underlined about these commentaries. So just now, Uttava Ji mentioned here, Krishna washes Priyaji's lotus feet. And drive them off with his yellow dhoti. Gurudev says this is underlined. Because now, so all our dear senior devotees kindly explained just same as Gurudev's word. Gurudev said this is absolute truth. This is absolute's highest beauty. That's why So I'm surprised that I came here and、uh, so all of you discuss this point. It's like a represent of Guru Dev. And、uh, maybe he also read Mahatma already here. I don't know. Mine's not u n d e r l i n e Yeah. We, we stop. Where we stop to? Okay. Then one point is here. And、uh, Guru Dev mentioned one more. Touching Radhika's feet. And bowing down to them is like a festival of rasa for Krishna. This sentence is also good, Dev says, underline. This is also absolute truth. The reason why is already all of you discussed. Just Jananda Maharaj said, I, I want to repeat. This is the glory of Mohan. Mohan becomes servant, Mohan becomes manjari. We serve Radhika, serve love, is highest. This is what we want to learn, we want to feel. This is our goal. Just shortly, I would like to share Guru Deva's commentary and feelings. I try. Shri Radha, thank you.、Yeah. I have a few small and thank you,、um, insignificant comments on all the beautiful sharings.、Um, Jainanda Maharaj, when you were beautifully describing the threefold bending form of, of Mohan, I was picturing him being, when he becomes completely. Immersed in this feeling of Radharani when he becomes close, he,、uh, he begins to, to lose himself. We've seen that in many verses. <clears throat> And in, in the US, we have a phrase that says he be, you, become, you become weak in the knees. So when, you're, when you get close to your lover, sometimes you become weak in the knees. So your whole body starts to kind of slowly start to collapse as he's like, Dropping over as he's beginning to, to feel、um, Radharani's love, this Mahabhav. In the previous verse, he fainted, and this is kind of like the beginning symptom of him fainting as he's like slowly collapsing down. <laughs> Actually, in this t h i n oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead there. <laughs> this three folding forms. Is the playful form of the Lord. He is showing this because of the presence of Swamini. The Lord is、uh, actually the controller 
uh, he is uh, not in a playful mood. He is doing some job. He has to do something. He is controlling. That means the controller is controlling. But when this controller comes in the association of Swamini, he becomes playful. And because of this, he is always wearing his flute when he is in this uh, three-folding form. And that means this is this sweet Lord of Vrindavan. This is only Krishna. Then he is no more controller. He becomes this playful boy in Vrindavan. Nobody recognizes him as a lord or god. Uh, he, he is finished with this job. Now he is what uh, Jananda uh, said, that uh, he is now the subject. And uh, I mean, he is when he is... Uh, when he see the face of Swamini, then he is, he is swimming in the ocean of Rasa. But mm -hmm. in the association of Swamini, he mm -hmm. manifests his playful, sweet, threefold bending form. Mm -hmm. This is only happened when Swamini is there. And it's also because of the nature of uh, desire, isn't it? Desire is never, what should I say? It's never a, a lightning flash, a total emotion. It's one that's always um, playful. It's hiding and revealing and a little hint of this and a little tickle there. And so this is what the crooked Krishna means for me. I know that he's crooked. That means that the nature of love is crooked. It's never just coming right on you like a wave. It's coming in little hints. And, and this, this is what makes it increase, that it's playful, like you say, uh, In the uh, <laughs> in Norwegian language, there's now we're, we're citing our in Norwegian language. There's an expression which goes something like uh, "detours lead the furthest," which means the one that even though the road is longer, that they they give more life, they give more meaning, they lead you farther in life, just like they're leading you farther geograph geographically. And that's the same way with the crooked desire, that more you have to zigzag and hide and seek, the, the greater is the, the pleasure, the greater is the love. I also share one uh, German in, uh, in a <laughs> dialect. In a dialect. Ein bisschen schief hat God leave. <laughs> God loves crookedness. <laughs> <laughs> this is where our uh, Suniti is coming from this area. They say like this. Bishan Chief had got leave. And uh, I think the Norwegians tried to translate that, yes. <laughs> no. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the explaining that uh, he has this crookedness uh, actually of the Lord. This is only happened when he is with with Swamini. Then actually he is not no more recognized as the Lord. He is uh, this uh, sweet cowherd boy in Vrindavan. And uh, the Lord not plays a uh, flute. No one heard about Vishnu that he plays flute. This is uh, not possible. Because he has a, a majestatic, he is, he is the, 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 the highest 
he cannot play. This is not possible. But in the presence of Swamini, he can play a flute. This is why, why uh, Brahmana, uh, Brahma could not believe that this boy with his flute is the uh, uh, even the, the same personality of Godhead. And so uh, he did this, uh, what he did when he, uh, what was heißt entführen? Uh, kidnapped. Or, yeah. when, he, when he kidnapped the cowherd boys and the cows, when, uh, when he saw this, this boy playing with his friends in the forest and, was, and herding cows, he could not believe that this is the same Lord. For him, it was not possible. So he tried to test this. And so he kidnapped all the friends and the cows from the forest in Vrindavan and put them sleeping in a cave somewhere in his uh, abode of Ramaloka. And, uh, but when the Lord came back and saw that they all left the place, then he recognized that that happened. And so he manifest all these boys and cows exactly like they was before on the same place. And then when Brahma came back, he was more than astonished about the situation. So he just kidnapped these boys and he came back and they are still there. And what happened in the time between that all these boys and cows, when they come back to Vrindavan, all inhabitants of Vrindavan was so much attracted to these boys and cows. The cows, even from the cows, they were so attracted to their uh, mothers. And even the, the old bridge bosses was so attracted to the boys. Much more than before. There was love before, but now it's more intense. And the thing was, when Brahmana, when Brahma, sorry, when Brahma went back to check the, the, the cave. I think everyone knows the story, right? Or not so much. Then, uh, this, uh, uh, what is it, doorkeeper? Uh, they stop him. And he could not enter Brahmaloka. So, what was happened? Krishna, in the same time, he took the form of Brahma and went to Brahma Loka and told this uh, doorkeepers, or was it, what is it, security? Is gatekeeper. it doorkeeper? Huh? Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. G gatekeeper, yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, you will see soon there will be uh, another Brahma is coming, but he's an enemy. Don't let him in. So when the real Brahma then came, his own uh, abode was close to him. He has no place to go. And in this way, he went back and then he saw this the boys and all together and then he knows he did a, a big mistake when he separates the friends and he disturbed the Leela so this was a, a big mistake and then he took shelter on the lotus feet of, of Krishna then he realized wow this sweet Krishna there this playing boy is really he is the Lord himself so in that case we can understand the difference between Vishnu and Krishna, but it not means that he is uh, losing his his power 
of the Lord. This Krishna is as powerful, as more powerful as all other incarnations. But he is under the control of Swamini. So he forget this situation of the highest. He is really in Vrindavan. He is nobody uh, can see this. Even if he do the, the, the his lilas there, they will not. When Indra did the same, he also uh, disturbed uh, this with his uh, thunder and his heavy clouds because they stopped his um, his puja. But he made a different uh, uh, game with the Lord, so he not separate the bridge passes from Krishna. He brought them all together under the uh, Govardhan hill. When there was this heavy rain, Krishna put the Govardhan hill on his left finger. So that was the difference between Brahmas and Indras. Uh, uh, check who is the Lord. And one thing, Budapji, that was the moment when Radha and Mohan could see each other face to face. Mm. And all other bridge passes could see for seven days, they could see Mohan's beautiful face. And because of this, the, this, uh, uh, what Indra did with his clouds and water, was actually a, a big blessing for all and everyone was very happy under the Govardhan hill that was this Leela. And so that now yeah, we can understand that this was not this kind of a disturbance like Brahma did when he checked the power of the Lord. Because Indra brought all inhabitants of Vrindavan together under this big uh, mountain and Brahma put them in a separation place. So that was uh, the difference between that. So they cannot uh, understand what happened in Vrindavan, that there is the Lord Narayan Vishnu himself is playing with a flute and with cows and with his friends, with the gopis. And for sure they cannot see what the, the, the Leela with Radhika. <coughs> This is the beauty of this sweet threefold bending form. He's playing. This is his playing form. He's playing the flute. And when we make a short of this verse, we will find out, out when will Sri Rata's moon-like face become manifest to us. It's only the essence to us. Then in, this, in, in the middle part, there is a description of the beauty and the power of her face. But in short, we, could, we can read here. When will her moonlike face become manifest to us?
Dein energy also agree with this playful form? Hm? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> that he is in a, in this playful manifestation, this threefold form is, uh, is the manifestation of the Lord in his sweet form of Moha. Yes. Playful. Yes, playful. And, and the flute actually is a, is a symbol of this playfulness. Right? Yes. So there is four things different from, from Naraya. One one is this Ben Madri. <laughs> so this is Krishna's speciality. So you mentioned. Peacock feather is also. Wow, thank you for the beautiful story, Gora. I was, like so many of these Leelas in pastimes, I was not familiar with that. So I appreciate the, the beautiful sharing and story. Um, two other points in this first part of the commentary that I was inspired to kind of highlight um, was that even though Mohan lovingly wants to serve Priyaji, he cannot do it alone. He still needs the maidservants to serve. So in the, in the text it reads, Mohan lovingly wants to serve Priyaji in different ways. So the maidservants bring him a pitcher of water. Without them, he cannot, he cannot serve. Yeah. And then further down, the maidservants continue their service by bringing flowers for Sham. And so I just feel that this again shows the, shows the importance and also indirectly their desire for having the maidservant there because without the maidservant, none of it is possible. Yeah, you can imagine if you like to do this service, uh, uh, and and you have first you have to to uh, organize all the ingredients. Then uh, it will be a a long time uh, job for Mohan, and uh, so many has to sit there and wait and wait. And so this there is really this is a a, a part of the lila that it is uh, continuing. And this is a sweet exchange, and they are always three. This is really, we learned in the last weeks, we learned the nature of Mahaprabhu in this case. Uh, he is all three in one person, and this is amazing. So Mahaprabhu, is the incarn incarnation of the Lord who can feel himself, he can feel Swamini, and he can feel Manjani. This is amazing. And so they are here. Actually, Mahaprabhu is, is this concentrated sweetness in, inside the Kunja. He is relishing all what happened in the Kunja, all feelings, all baths. He is relishing what happened there in the Kunja. He is the one who bring the water and the flowers. He is the one who sit. And uh, he is also the one who makes uh, the puja. It's astonishing that that is possible. And this we, what is it, and taken, discovered, <laughs> discovered in the last weeks. 
And even Gurudev said that he could not see this this greatness of Mahaprabhu before. It's uh, it's really only we in the, in the mood of the Manjaris together we could we that was uh, we was able to discover this with the help of these beautiful books we read. Mm. So that is a uh, really a deep, deep uh, meditation need to to come to the point to relish this. Mahatma, Mahatma, you, 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 you comment. Your comment is, uh, I agree, and the very important things. Sometimes, you know, I feel, say, only Mohan, what can he do? Only Radhika, what, what can she do? Without Saki, without Manjari, Lila cannot happen. Yeah. Sometimes we also, you know, sometimes we, we think, oh, I'm so, you know, fallen. I cannot do anything, you know, but actually only Gurudev alone, what he can do. We, we, we are, we, all we need, we are helping Gurudev, we, we are helping, you know, our Guru Parampara, we are helping Radha Dasi. So, all, everybody needed to some, some, some help, some, some seva. <laughs> so, that is the beauty of our Guru Parampara. So, everybody needed. You know, we may have, you know, I may have very small power. It doesn't matter. Just we do small seva. One day, Lama Chandra want to build bridge, bridge. From, from India to Sri Lanka. And then one ant threw away very small, small, what is it, small like sound, you know. And then Hanumanji said, what are you doing? You are doing very small job. I can bring all the mountain to this one. Then someone yeah. could hear. Hey, Hanuman, this power, who is giving to you? I can take out your power and I can give this ant. Like, so therefore, everybody needed every want to serve this is this is kind of normal condition of our our living entity so this is mahatma point is i think very very nice very important jesus also make an example of this there was in the synagogue there was uh one uh was this pharisee and they give a donation and uh, they are all rich people. They give uh, some uh, dinar, or I don't know what it at the time was, but it was like 10 euro, maybe. And there was also a poor lady, very poor lady, who came and only give a penny. And then the others are laughing about this penny. And then uh, Jesus also said, but this was the only money this lady had left. And she gave all her money. So that was to the father, this donation is uh, millions of times more than this, what the rich man gave and make no pain to him. And so we can see the, it's not, he count with different, uh, like, like we, we think our seva is not important, but what you say, Jainandaji, is, uh, amazing 
uh, not amazing. It's it's uh, it's very important, and because we know this, that the lila will not happen without us. That is because uh, Raghunath Das is so much suffering when he is separated from his seva, because he. Because he knows when he is not doing the seva, the lila will not happen. That means it is always as uh, uh, individual lila what happens. So we can see that that the lila is not that. All of us, millions in one kunja. This is like, um, for example, that the rasa dance when it happened. The rasa dance, every gopi feel that Krishna is dancing with her. But there are millions of gopis, they have the same feeling. And this is also when we are in the kunja ser serving, there are not millions of manjaris around. There are a few manjaris there. Maybe I'm alone there, or with my guru manjari. And we we do this seva, and when we not do the seva, this kunja will be empty. They cannot meet without the manjari, without us, individual. So this is the feeling of Raghunath Das when he is separated from her Swamini and from his seva, because he actually knows this. And the same is as long as we are not in that consciousness, this Leela not happen. This individual Leela where we are the Manjari and we serve them. Okay. The last point I felt inspired to read again was this description of when Radharani and Mohan look at each other as as Udav was pointing out, how beautiful <clears throat> Srimati's face is when she looks at Mohan's face at that time, how many amorous pastimes her beautiful face reveals, how enchanting are the movements of her eyes and her eyebrows. This, I feel, is in the perspective of the Manjari, because she is the witness. So she is the one that feels the beauty of Srimati's face when Radharani looks at Mohan at that time. She is the one that witnesses the amorous pastimes that her face reveals. She's the one who becomes enchanted by the movements of Radharani's eyes and eyebrows because she is the witness. Radharani and Mohan are engaged in each other, so they can't witness this perspective of the viewer. Mm. Oh, very nice point. Why Manjari are looking? Not for their enjoyment. Manjaris are always ready for seva. What is Manjari seva? 
to feel Swamini's feeling. That's why, like us also, if someone who want to understand, then I see their eyes, eyebrows, like, <laughs> like a girl devil. So girl devil said something, but、uh, we see his eyes and eyebrows and different feeling come sometime, right? That's why we need to see this is not for our enjoyment to understand her deep feeling, deep desire. This is the meaning of witness. Then automatically this beauty comes. But this is not only like a material beauty, no. Inside of this beauty, beauty, we see her Mahababa. How much our Swamini love Mohan. How much our Swami make Mohan happy. This, how deep her desire is. This makes her shining and beauty. Then automatically we want to serve Swamini. We love Swamini. Shri Rade.、Mm -hmm. And when we see this, right, Kishori, then actually we see also the、uh, afford of our、uh, service. Because who was decorating Swamini before? Who made the Uh, the eyebrows, who m a k e this point on her forehead, who is decorating the beautiful Swamini. And when we watch that Mohan is attracted by her beauty, we can see, oh, our service was successful. He is,、uh, what is it? Astonished from her moon like face. But this is also our seva. It was our seva to decorate our Swamini in the morning. And when he is uh, uh, doing this、uh, foot seva, washing lotus feet. That was the work of the Manjari to decorate this lotus foot with、uh, foot lark and make, make beautiful. And when we see how attracted Mohan is to the lotus feet, then this is our rasa. Then we see the successfulness of our service. And、uh, that, that is our enjoyment. Seva Rasa. We saw, we see the success in our service. Mohan is in bliss. Swamini is in bliss. So our service was successful. And you're right. We see, we see, we are viewer. It's, it's a very it's a very nice point. I guess it was、uh, Mahatma first who made it about what's being expressed is from a Manjari, from Manjari eyes. But what's、um, miraculous about the text, we, let's remember it's, it's written by Anantadas Babaji. Who's in Sadakavesh sitting in r a d h a k u n d I don't know. It was 20 years ago, maybe. And so, what it's really also very beautiful to, to imagine what he's experiencing. He's sitting there in his room in deep, deep meditation with his pen and paper in hand. There's some beautiful pictures on, online of him writing. And this is what he feels and sees. He puts himself in that Manjari, in that Man Manjari、um, identity, and he channels that into, into this writing. So it's a it's very beautiful observation from、uh, Mahatma and Kishori that this is, that this is Manjari service. 
but it's being channeled through this uh, sadhaka, who's in Siddharesh, who's in, in spiritual body, sitting there writing in, in his room in Radhakund. I met him two times together with Gurudev. And uh, what I recognize in, in him was that he is actually no more in the Sadaka there. He was uh, on another level, I felt. Mm. And he was not always so much aware. This is my feeling. No, Nobody for sure. knows. For sure. But he's Nobody still sitting knows. there with a pen and paper, you know, in the, even though he's in the, yeah, another level, definitely. Like uh, also Raguna, I mean, to, to, uh, to write these verses, one has to be uh, a manifest in this. Otherwise, he cannot uh, write. Yeah. And this is what we're trying to do ourselves, put ourselves in this consciousness, in this place, and then yeah. feel. Yes. And all these pictures are really uh, leftovers by, by them to our blessing. Yeah. So they give uh, this big amount of mercy to all of us to so that we can have a, a glimpse of the beauty of the Leela. And Gurudev, together with Gurudev, we really can enter in this world of the feelings. He makes us relish this. He is the one who gives the bath. Without him, we didn't know that we are Manjaris. We are confused for 100%. We don't know if we're Manjari, Gopi, Saki, and we don't know the difference between the, all of them. Mm. But to relish these books, first we have to fix our bar and also the, our Ishtadev. And this is really the, the beauty of our Gurudev. He is fix us in our in our bath and also he is fix us on our uh, Ishtadevi. Before that was even some years before I'm now I'm around 15, 16 years together with Gurudev. But the first years I still was in this God consciousness. I was really this, because uh, this was all we learned in Christianity and I think also mainly in, in Vrindavan. There are not many, they, they speak about the priority of, of Swamini and fix us on this path. And uh, because of his mercy, we changed our mood our bath from the controller to the what he say sumum bonu absolute truth and this is swamini so yeah yes gora all from his mercy my god and i love udochi the the image of thinking of anantadas babaji writing where he is i mean to me what what i felt there was he's he's in viewer consciousness you know he is he is witnessing these feelings and the writing is just happening it's not by yeah. his doing by his effort that the words on this page are are manifesting and as you so beautifully pointed out this is this is our goal to become a viewer 
in, in our lives here where we can exist in both this, this spiritual setting in this material world. Mm. To live in the feelings of the spiritual setting in this material world. This is the meaning of realized soul. Very a realized soul live in that what he get. He is authority. He can write these explanations because he realized all this. Mm. This is not a, like a teacher. He only can write what he read before. But that not means that he realized that, that was written there. But this Ananda Das Babaji, and there are also other uh, Babaji's comments inside. So we will we will uh, visit. Maybe this year is my plan. This I think his name is Advaita. He is living in uh, the Netherlands, and he uh, uh, translate the books, and he actually know who is taking part of all these uh, uh, explanations. Wow. So we, we like to listen from him. That would be so nice to know. It's not it's not very huh? clear sometimes. Yeah, Advaita Das. Advaita Das, yes. I told you his wife was uh, some months before he, he she was here in the Govindas and I could speak to her and she also invite to uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, she invite us. Uh, I mean, they are no more together now, but uh, they live very close and they still in friendship. And so uh, I now I got the address and uh, I plan to visit him. So maybe we uh, we make a first contact and then we can uh, let's see. To uh, to get the secrets of of the books. Hmm. Well, I would like to do that too. So please let me know. Yeah. So from Uttabaji and Gaurasundar's sharings, I remember one word from Kesha Baba. Now. Uttabaji says, how transcendental Ananta Das Babaji is or was, maybe is. He is not in this material vibration, totally transcendental. I also got uh, maybe five, six times darshan with him, fortunately with Jananda Maharaj's mercy. I feel really ugly. And I asked Kesha Baba one day, we cannot become like uh, Lagnata Das, this strict way of bhakti. We cannot live 40 years, Radhakunda. We cannot give 1,000 dandava to devotees, mm -hmm. right? We can say any words, but if we do really, it's impossible. This is honest, at least my feeling, right? Then what to do? I asked Kesha Baba. Then Kesha Baba said, no. It's impossible for me also. That's oh. why we need Kripasita. Ananta Das Babaji also, our Guru Dev also. For me, like you, um, senior devotees also, I cannot become like you. But mercy, Kripa is only my hope. That's why we, so Kesha Baba says, every day, read Virapak Manjari, only one bus, just every day reading, then automatically Manjari Baba come. This is Kesha Baba's word. Mm -hmm. No need to pretend to become Ragnata Dasa or any special Acharyas, no. Just be humble what we can do. We serve humbly and respect and wait for mercy. This is Kesha Baba's word. Shri Rade. 
Thank you. Sri Rupa Goswami explains the meaning of the word lavanya, which is used in the text as follows in his Ujvala Nilamini. Lavanya is a luster that shines in the limbs as if it shines from within pearls. Streams of luster gush from Srimati's face. How wonderful are the movements of her eyes and eyebrows. They show the Bhava Bhushana, emotional ornament called Lalita. The Lalita Alankada is shown by a tender girl who makes playful, enchanting gestures with the eyebrows and all her limbs. Just as the moon was churned from the milk ocean, Radha's spotless, moon-like face was churned from the ocean of transcendental love mellows. These mellows are most precious and powerful, and Sri Radha's moon-like face is the quintessence of the entire ocean of them. This face is not a material luminary. It glows with the taste of Mahabhav. It is useless to try to compare her face with the moon. <coughs> her eyes with lotus flowers and her nose with sesame flowers. Sri Radhika can only be understood through pure love and not through any use of words. Sri Radhe. Here also Gurudev says underline just now Mahatmaji beautiful reading. Uh, I would like to share. First underline is these mirrors are most precious and powerful. Yes. Radha's spotless moon like face was tuned from the ocean of transcendental love mirrors. And next sentence this is underlined. 
These metals are most precious and powerful. And Gurudev says, This is Radha Kripa Kataksha. Every day we are singing in evening arati Radha Kripa Kataksha. This Radha Kripa Kataksha is glorify how Radha is beautiful. Especially this face is so beautiful. That's why if we sing Radha Kripa Kataksha with this meditation, it's goes to absolute truth. This is Gurudeva's explanation. And next point, Gurudeva says, just now Mahatma Ji is reading, Shri Radhika can be understood only through pure love and not through any use of words. Gurudeva here loves very much means not through any use of words. Love doesn't need word. How we can understand Srimati Radhika? Pure love. This is the only way. This is not information gathering. We cannot understand how much Shastra we read, we can find it, no? Just love, rather, with pure heart. This is our hope and this is uh, very important. Then, how to understand Radhika? By mercy. By mercy, she gives us the vision how much Radha is beautiful. I try to remember Gurudeva's words and uh, try to share it with you, Sri Radha. Yeah. To me, I feel that this sentence means that Sri Radhika or Swamini can only be found through feelings, not through Sastra or any book. And these feelings are feelings of pure love. One can also read this verse in the following way. When will the moon-like face of Sri Radha that causes even Shamasundra, who is astonishing at every moment and who enchants the whole world to stand in his beautiful threefold bending form be manifest to me. The maidservants have seen that Shama Sundra's elegance is astonishing at every moment while he worships Nikunja Devi, Radhika. Shams' pastimes are most astonishing when he submits himself to Srimati's service. So that's when Sorry to return to my astonishing, but <laughs> <laughs> this is when when he is at her service, that's when the greatest feelings are created and the ones to the material mind that are the most surprising, the most unexpected, the most astonishing. 
So in a way, from the from our material positions, our our poor, sad material positions, <laughs> a thermometer of of the of the love that's flowing between them is our surprise, our astonishment, a weak and imperfect thermometer. But nonetheless, the more we are surprised, the more we can detect that there's something very special going on. Yeah. Okay, my dears, perhaps Kishori can keep reading or someone else. I have a class to go to now, so I don't want to cut our meditation short here. If there's someone else that wants to continue reading, please feel free. Mm -hmm. For me, it's okay. The one and a half hour, I think we have a lot of beautiful yeah. topics. And uh, yeah. I'm always happy to, after the class, to, uh, to uh, how to say, to stay in the feeling and to relish yeah. more. It's, if there is too much, it's also, there's not meaning of that. It's more feelings coming. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's only my point. Yes, our pot is full and our mind is focused. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of you. Thank 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 you.